Welcome to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan, where we're going to cast and blast you right out of this world with some of the best hunting and fishing stories that you can't even imagine. Welcome to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. This is John Hennigan in studio with our host, Frank Selby, the uh, man among men, uh, world-renowned fly fishing instructor, and also he's a good guy. Oh, John, something real important. Okay. We already got two for Salmon Fall Lodge next year. Oh, cool. They That's called great. me and I said to give you a call uh-huh. or send you an email. Well, we just have to come up with a date. Hey, Frank, what are you thinking um, about a date for Salmon Falls next year? First of all, uh, recently got back from there, and that, you know, I fished catch a can every year for the last 15 years, uh, normally at a different place. But Salmon Falls is not only a step above, it's probably the nicest resort in Ketchikan and one of the nicest in uh, Alaska. Uh, we just got How's the food? It. Oh, my gosh. It's, uh, um, what they do is they have a restaurant that isn't designed uh, for, no, not necessarily for the guests, but it's one of the nicest restaurants, uh, certainly the nicest in uh, you know, the northern part, actually probably in all of Ketchikan. And you know it's it's uh, um, gourmet quality, incredible. Well, food. you know me, I, yeah. if it isn't good food, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I they, have a a million a million dollar taste on a beer budget. Yeah. But I well, I'll tell get you to what. You know, they, the have, they have you know fresh this, fresh that, fresh that, you know ribeyes, you know whatever you want, and it's just incredible food and it's a beautiful beautiful restaurant uh, and we're going to be posting some pictures on the website um, but yes that would that's awesome anyway Frank um, maybe we can get some input from our listeners in Ketchikan normally if you're looking for kings it's like the end of May through into July uh, and the silvers will come back later in the fall and the pinks are always there um, the middle of July or beginning of July can work. You can get pretty much everything. But if you're targeting something, either early or late. So we'd like to get uh, some feedback from our listeners of when they want to go and what species they're trying to target. Hell of a day there all, all summer. All right, got to go. We'll be right back. A few years ago, a sailor set out to design a boat shoe that was comfortable and stable, non-skid, and wouldn't mark the decks. Today, these incredibly comfortable shoes are worn by anglers, boaters, professional guides, and charter captains. Go to softscience.com to see more. Soft Science shoes and boots are lightweight and shock absorbent with just the right level of support. Several styles come in all sizes. Enjoy the Soft Science shoe in the water and out. Check them out at softscience.com. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. If you are still using a plastic hard shell cooler, things have changed for the better. AO coolers are lighter with twice the efficiency of the traditional bulky coolers. AO coolers are the best available soft-sided cooler with three-quarter inch high-density closed-cell foam insulation. They will keep ice frozen for 24 hours in hot weather. Easy to carry, less space, it fits product inside for better performance. Go to aocoolers.com to order or find a retailer available at West Marine. With a long pedigree, the Snow Bee brand today offers the very best equipment modern technology can provide. Started in Europe, Snow Bee is now providing quality fly fishing gear in the USA. Waders, clothing, rods, reels, fly lines, bags, and innovative new accessories. Enjoy your sport and leisure time more than ever. The affordable value of Snow Bee makes it available to everyone. Go to snowbee-usa.com.
Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan and our host, Frank Selby. Uh, and you're listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio, which you can go to the website anytime. Just go to fishtalkradio.com, listen to the show. You're going to miss some things because uh, we go through stuff, and you can go and re-listen and take some notes. You're going to learn some things today. First of all, I would like to introduce my friend Brian Hatch, and AO uh, stands for what, Brian? Uh, American Outdoors. American Outdoors, AO Coolers. And yep. you, how long has AO Coolers been around? Uh, they've been around now about 27 years. Yeah. Well, let me give a, a kind of a real quick. When I first met him at a trade show, he had uh, a booth out. And I go, well, that's interesting because, you know, we were soft-sided coolers. Now, we're not talking about, uh, you know, a plastic um, <clears throat> you know, bag or canvas bag with some air bubble insulation in it. I mean, these coolers. Uh, they're a little bit heavy, but uh, why don't you tell us how they're made? Um, what we do is, uh, you know, back in the day when people used the regular coolers and stuff, they didn't really concentrate about the, the insulation, you know. So what we decided to do is, is put in twice as much insulation in there. Uh, we actually uh, make the insulation ourselves, so it's not insulation that you can go out and buy. Uh, it's a high-density closed cell foam that is strictly made for uh, us at our factory. Um, but then what we did also is with the high insulation, we have some other applications that we put in the cooler that usually I don't like to tell people because that's our, kind of our, our secret of keeping the uh, the ice ice cold uh, and, and keeping it so long. Um, but we have like three or four other items that are uh, in the cooler uh, that we've learned over time uh, keeps the ice longer. Uh, and the important thing is it doesn't let the cooler uh, sweat. So that's true. That's true. I hadn't thought about with those, that. Yeah, with those few items in there and stuff, <laughs> um, the cooler doesn't sweat, so you can keep it out in the sun at 100 degrees or 110 degrees, uh, and there's no condensation on the cooler. So you can put it in the back of your car, you can leave it in the car, uh, and your seats aren't going to get wet. Well, there's. Uh, let me make a couple of comments. First of all, it's a cooler, okay? And you can use it every for everything that you'd use a cooler for. Uh, the difference is is that uh, it, if you... It doesn't slide around it's you can pick it up and carry it with one hand you know those plastic box coolers are a pain to carry and to use you know and uh, these things are just they're so easy so comfortable you set it on the fl- floor of the boat it's not sliding all around and uh, I'm been right <laughs> sitting on one one time in, in Mexico and there's a little bit of wave and a cooler slid and I went with it. But anyway, <laughs> that's not but they're they're a completely different operation. But what I will say and I can attest to this, um, in fishing in Mexico, um, I filled up one of your coolers and um, about twenty four hours from the time I put the fish in uh, to the time I got home and opened it was about twenty four hours. And those fillets were rock hard. They weren't just, you know, still frozen. They were rock hard. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's it, it's amazing. Whenever I go down, you know, or to Alaska, they put in those uh, uh, cardboard wax, paper, this mm-hmm. other thing. They, you know, they work pretty well. But mm-hmm. these, man, if you want to keep it hard and fresh, and that's the whole secret. You don't want to partially thaw something and then refreeze it. No. And they no, stay, I- yeah. Yeah. I got one We've, question really quick. Yes. My backpack one is getting dirty. Oh, well, you, you know, better get another one. <laughs> three years. I want to know if I can wash that in a washing machine. If I just use uh, cold water or lukewarm water, can I do that? We also just put it in the uh, in the washing machine because uh, then it gets you know completely soaked. The best thing is to uh, just take some you know you can take some Tide detergent, put it in a bucket, and then take a cloth and then just clean it that way. Kind of the old-fashioned way of, of, of cleaning clothes and stuff like that instead of putting it into uh, uh, into a washing machine. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah, because yeah. every time I go out on the boat, I take that with me with pop and I freeze three bottles of water and mm-hmm. everything in there stays perfect all day if it's been setting in the sun all day it's unbelievable and I I know you say it's supposed to only take 20 pounds 
I have had 29 pounds of frozen fish in there and brought it back from Mexico. And well, it was as hard as a rock. The other thing, That's Frank, great. Frank, you can use that as a carry-on so you don't have to paper check luggage. I know and, I did. I, I, and what I you do? To, I had to. Car- I had to put my rods back through coming back from yeah. Mexico. Well, <laughs> you can take the larger size, which I have. It's a, was it a thirty six, which will hold fifty pounds yep. of frozen yep. fillets, and you ch- you check that. Uh, you take your carry on, where you can put twenty pounds. Frank says twenty nine, but I don't know how he. I don't know. He must have sat on it. But uh, and then, uh, according to the airline regulations, you're allowed to take something akin to a purse. And yeah, John, you forget one thing. What's that? I was in the electronics business and circuit boards, so yeah. I know how to save every inch. Oh, okay. Every <laughs> half inch. I guess. Anyway, so what you do, you're traveling. Here you got 70 pounds of fillets, which you'd normally check two bags. And uh, so you check the, the cooler, uh, the 36 quart, and then uh, uh, the backpack, and you got about 70 pounds of fillets. Uh, and then you can have a you know, small, smallish. Um, that you need. If you go to Mexico, all you need is T-shirts and shorts, right? Yep. And uh, so, you know, anything that you really need, you can uh, do that. And then, of course, the things you cannot carry on, you just throw them in the uh, uh, the larger ice chest. But there's only a couple of things like knives and things you have to put in there. Mm-hmm. And you know, yep. it makes traveling so easy. They're, you don't need wheels. They're easy to carry. Yeah, and we've we've even had stories of uh, people where their flight has been delayed and oh, been yeah. over 48 hours, and the guy was expecting uh, his fish to be completely thawed and just ruined, and uh, he got it back. Um, and it had thawed out a little bit, but the fish was still fresh and everything, and he, he saved hundreds of dollars um, but just by keeping it in there. Yeah. And what we tell people, too, is um, you never want to use ice when you have the fish uh, yeah. frozen and stuff right. they bring it down to like negative 20 degrees and where ice can only go to 32 degrees so whenever and this is a tip for you know yeah. everyone on, on any of your coolers uh, when you bring the fish back and everything never put ice with it because uh, that is at 32 degrees yeah you think you're, you're, you you think you're keeping it cooler but you're not you just want to get fresh you know you want to get hard frozen uh, and that's what keeps it cool put nice in mm-hmm. it it does the opposite effect of what you want yeah, yeah, it actually warms wanna, it up. If you want to throw some ice in your day pack or something and drink the water, but, you know, you don't use yeah. it. You don't put ice in when you ship it with the, when it's frozen hard. Yeah. And then what we'll be uh, coming out with in, uh, in the springtime is our, uh, our fish kill bag, which will uh, be when you're on the boats and stuff. And you can take it down to the, the Mexico and then leave it down there or whatever. Um, but uh, when you catch the fish, everyone wants to keep them fresh. And sometimes down there they don't uh, have the uh, equipment to do that. So this will be a, a soft kill bag that you'll be able to roll up. Uh, and they'll come in four feet and uh, six feet uh, that you can put on the uh, back of your boat and uh, keep the fish fresh until you oh, get okay. back home. Okay, so you just put ice in that and throw the fish in it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Until you get back home, or until you get it, uh, yeah, you get it processed and then bring it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. you get it back and process it and everything like that, yeah. it just keeps it fresh while you're still uh, out in the water. Hey, Brian, we're about out of time, so mm-hmm. let's cover anything that we need to know. I think that we've done a pretty good job, but we're going to have to keep bringing you on more often because there's so much information in the tip they use about traveling and carrying fish and how to do it. Uh, these are things that people need to know. Forget, yeah. th- forget those uh, Coleman's, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just, you know, they're, they're, they're hard to use. They don't work nearly as well. Even the insulated ones don't work that well. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yep. um, Brian at AO Coolers, and the website is uh, it's aocoolers.com. It's an easy one. Out- yep, <laughs> that is it. American Outdoor, AO Coolers with an S, dot mm-hmm. com. And go check it out, and they're very reasonably priced. They've got some real high-end, uh, expensive coolers out these days, and I have yet to find something that works as well or better. And the main uh, thing is some of those it. expensive box-type coolers. Uh, yeah, they work real well. They're about three inches worth of foam, and they're mm-hmm. heavy, and they're, bu- they're bulky. But man, you don't need that. This stuff does the same thing. 
Yeah, so, well, we appreciate it. We, we, we try to make a, pro, a quality product at a, a reasonable price. So right. and, uh, you know, our, our, both our backpack and our 36-pack have been great for the uh, fishing okay. community. Well, I'm so going to go down to uh, uh, Cabo again about the next month. I need to take a couple down there and, and show them around, and Frank needs one. So uh, we're going to bring right. it back on. Okay, Brian, that's wonderful. Right. Keep, keep doing Thank what you're you. doing. Thanks. Nice talking, John. You're listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. We'll be right back with some very interesting guests. Hey, Mike, I think we need some more cowbell. passionate sports fishermen who value first class fishing experiences paired with personalized service and amenities all inclusive salmon falls fishing resort on the inland passage reinvents the ketchikan fishing getaway guests enjoy exceptional gourmet cuisine superior fishing excursions fully guided charter or self-guided in center console boats accommodating three anglers updated guest rooms and suites on-site fishing processing to clean freeze and pack your catch Rooms range from log cabin rustic to modern. Our 52 rooms offer the ultimate in comfort after a long day of sightseeing, fishing, and exploring Ketchikan. Non-anglers love Salmon Falls, too. Shopping along Creek Street, kayaking, hiking, whale watching, or gathering around our fire pits with a hot beverage. All at prices less than expected. Just pull up Salmon Falls Resort in your search engine. The East Cape of Baja, Mexico is world famous for sport fishing. Dorado, tuna, wahoo, marlin, sailfish, roosterfish, and parco. The Van Warmer Resorts make dreams come true at a price all can afford. Hotel Palmas de Cortez, Playa del Sol, and Hotel Punta Colorado have the biggest and best sport fishing fleet in all of Mexico. Call toll-free to 877-777-TUNA to find out how affordable world-class fishing can be. The finest resorts and the best boats in East Cape. Call 877-777-TUNA. Vagabundos del Mar. Boat and Travel Club has 42 years experience introducing RVers to the joys of Mexico. Specializing in Baja, Vagabundos leads caravans and sponsors fishing tournaments, trailer boat cruises, and weekend getaways in Mexico and the West. Vagabundos Del Mar also saves its 10,000 members tons of money on low-cost auto insurance. Stay up to date on Mexican travel with the printed newsletter online at V-A-G-A-B-U-N-D-O-S dot com or call 800-474-BAJA. With a long pedigree, the snow Snowbee brand today offers the very best equipment modern technology can provide. Started in Europe, Snowbee is now providing quality fly fishing gear in the USA. Waders, clothing, rods, reels, fly lines, bags, and innovative new accessories. Enjoy your sport and leisure time more than ever. The affordable value of Snowbee makes it available to everyone. Go to snowbee-usa.com. A full surface fly shop. His and her her Fly Fishing offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of FishHuntTalkRadio.com or listen live Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan, and we hope our host, Frank Selby. And Frank is going to introduce some couple of people that he knows that sound very interesting. And uh, Frank, would you see if you can uh, take over for a minute? Sure, Zach. Why don't you introduce your friend and give us all the information on both of the lodges and your fishing guides? Right on, yeah. So uh, my name's Zach Montano. I'm the director of operations for Montana Angler Fly Fishing. Um, we're a full-service uh, fly shop and guide service located in Bozeman, Montana. Um, we own and operate a couple fly fishing lodges here. Um, one is the Madison River Lodge on the upper Madison River. Uh, we also own and operate the Boulder River Outpost, which is a, a small lodge um, on the Boulder River, a tributary to the Yellowstone. Um, I'm sitting here with one of our guides, uh, Pierce OJ, and um, we're happy to be on with you guys. Hey, Pierce. So, Pierce, is this the best time to come up and fish with you? 
Gosh, I mean, you know, fall is nice, but the real shoulder season, spring and late fall, that's that's probably when the best fishing is to be had. I think in early April to early October. Perfect. We're ready to go. Make your reservations. <laughs> we, we've got spots on the boat ready for you guys. Uh, okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, the you mentioned the lodges. I'm sorry, uh, Frank. You mentioned the lodges. Can you tell us a little bit about each one of them? Yeah, so um, they're both all-inclusive fly fishing lodges um, right on the river. Um, the Upper Madison is, you know, a pretty pretty world-famous trout fishery. Oh, yeah. And, and our lodge there is called the Madison River Lodge. Um, you know, it's a true fly fishing lodge. Everything revolves around fishing schedules. Um, it's all-inclusive, so you just show up, turn your brain off, and fish. Um, we've got a great chef that lives on site there, prepares all the meals in an open kitchen. All of our guests sit together for meals and you know, tell stories about the day, enjoy some great food, beer and wine, and, and hang out. You know, the, the river mm-hmm. wraps around the lodge. So, and how, how large is the lodge? It's a, it's a five-bedroom lodge with two queen beds in each room, so we can accommodate up to ten guests at a time. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice size for still having that kind of intimate feel, you know, um, but we can still get some, some fairly large groups in there. Um, so we so, feel like it's kind of the sweet spot as far as sizes go. Well, Zach, one more quick thing. Where would we email you or pick you up on the web page? Would you give us that information, too? Absolutely. Yeah, so you can uh, check us out at www.montanaangler.com. Um, and you can always email us at info at montanaangler.com. Well, that's an easy one. There you go. Montana Angler. I, I can remember that. Just, we're just simple fishermen, so we try to keep things easy. Watch out. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then our other lodge is uh, the Boulder River Outpost. Um, you know, that's a smaller lodge, eight-person max capacity. The cool thing about that lodge is if you have at least three people in your group, you get it all to yourself. So we, we set it up as an exclusive stay. Um, there's great wade fishing right on the East Boulder River on site, and then we can float and wade the Boulder River, float the Yellowstone River, and we have some great spring creeks and private ranch waters in the area as well. So for diversity of different water, it's hard to beat uh, that spot. Well, obviously that part of the world, you know, trout fishing, but what all, uh, what all would you hope to catch on a trip like that? You know, we, we just target trout. So um, we, have, we have a good variety of trout here, rainbows, browns, west slope, and yellowstone cutthroat, as well as some brookies here and there. Um, you know, some of our guys are into some carp fishing on the fly, um, and you always have the elusive Rocky Mountain whitefish to catch as well. Mm. Yeah. I'm surprised catfish <laughs> would be there. I, like the, I thought they liked warmer water. What's that, carp? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, and you know, midsummer, late late July through August, um, we'll see some carp moving up the Yellowstone from the plains in the east. Um, also on the Missouri River, there's some pretty good carp fisheries mm-hmm. on on some of the dam section. Mm-hmm. Of Missouri. Well, I got it. They have the uh, uh, the carp contest every year there on the Missouri. They're That's not. Right. They're yeah, not up at, up at um, Canyon Ferry. They've got a carp contest every year. Yeah. Um, so that that draws all sorts of anglers. Yeah, yeah my well, buddy used to go up there all the time. Yeah, I've got about 12 friends around Montana that I love to talk mm-hmm. to. But I'll tell you, I, carp are like a train when you hook them on well, a fly. Well, they're, <laughs> they're very wary, aren't they? They're not that easy to catch or hook. Right, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're pretty spooky fish, and they can be a challenge for sure, um, especially when you're kind of fishing for them, you know, sight fishing on some flats. Um, you know, it can be it can be challenging, which a lot of anglers really appreciate. Well, Zach, I'm not I'm not going to guarantee it's true, but my understanding is that uh, carp were brought over to the United States about 100, 150 years ago, and the reason that they were brought over was for food. Uh, and you know, people used to love them, but you right. know, I don't, nobody eats carp. They're full of bones. And but, uh, do you have any comment on that? You know, I think Pierce might be able to to chime in on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I think timeline that's accurate. Uh, but carp sashimi is fantastic. Oh, 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Some of the most delicious white meat you've ever had. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Right. There. In the Catholic orphanage, we used to have buffalo head carp ever Friday. Nice. They're well, not bad eating. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if I, I don't know one if... thing you guys all need to know. Do you know which fish you guys have been talking about was the first sports fish? Uh, brown? The first sports fish? No. Nope. trout. Nope. Carp? Carp from the first <laughs> dynasty. Oh, 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 and oh, and oh, 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 with silk line, silk, silk hook, a uh, silk line, silk uh, feather, to, and a bone hook, and uh, there was in one of the Chinese uh, dynasty people, they found the rod, reel, line, and hooks and flies already made up hmm. in the first dynasty. Crazy. Well, I, I learned something new today. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I used to everybody would say, oh, it started in France or it started in England. No, it started in China. Hmm. Oh, right on. And I will say, regardless of, of the eating, um, all of our fishing's catch and release, whether it's trout or carp or whitefish or whatever. We we put them all back, so we try to we try to practice sustainable, you know, guided fishing and, and catch and release is is our forte. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that used to get me upset back there when I was guiding on the Madison, was some guy would be fighting a big white fish, and then he'd go, oh, it's only a white fish. And I'd look at him, I said, you fought him for five minutes, and you say it it's no fun? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I think a lot of guys would tell you, uh, maybe secretly, that white fish can save the day every now and then. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was supposed to get back there on my birthday, but they had a surprise birthday party for me. I heard about that. Yeah. They made me 49 this year. It kind of made me mad. I, I thought you were 95. Uh, let's get well, let's put it this years. way. Fra- Frank is, uh, uh, he, he, he's, he's had the experience of a 95-year-old, but he's just a kid. Yeah, at heart. <laughs> That's what matters. <laughs> yeah. I I believe Dick Clark in the old days. If you act young, you run around with younger people, you'll always stay young. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's a state of mind. You got it. Oh, uh, you. but really, the end of September is when our big browns start running there on the Madison yeah, they, they start running, you know, late September. October is kind of the sweet spot. Um, for those yeah. people that aren't familiar with the Madison River, um, it has three lakes along the river on the upper, um, two of which are man-made, one natural, caused by a big earthquake and landslide. Um, so you've got Innis Lake, Quake Lake, and Hebgen Lake. Each of those respective lakes have a nice run of brown trout that move into the main stem to spawn. Um, and, and really, October is the most consistent for, for hitting those fall-run brown trout. Um, and, you know, that brings anglers from all over, um, especially into Yellowstone Park, where you have the chance yeah. to, to, you know, target big migratory brown trout um, within Yellowstone Park with bison herds around you and, and geysers going off. It's a pretty unique experience. Yeah. I love that. Bob Jacklin and me used to guide together when we were kids. Well, the, uh, now tell us more about the methods. Um, you, you can wade, you can uh, uh, float, you can um, bank. Would give us an idea about what most of the people do when they go to the lodge. Yeah, uh, great question. And I think the cool thing about the Madison is is the variety. Even on the same river, you know, section by section, the Madison changes quite a bit. Um, you know, generally the the mid section of the of, of the upper Madison River. Is, is best float fished. Um, that's kind of the, the classic riffle section um, where we can cover, you know, 30 to 40 miles of water via boat. Um, the, the top end and the lower end of the upper Madison River are restricted weight fishing only by regulation. Fishing so to what? I'm sorry. still like to use drift boats as a vehicle to kind of get around. 
Um, but then you actually get out of the boat to wade fish. So whether oh. you're a wade fisherman or you prefer fishing from a drift boat, um, you know, the Madison has something to offer for everybody. Um, once you get into Yellowstone Park, then we're, then we're restricted to wade fishing. Uh, Frank, we've only got about 30 seconds. Let's reintroduce uh, Zach, and if there's other, something quick, but make it quick. we got less than 30 seconds. Okay, Zach, give him your website one more time. Yeah, we're at uh, www.montanaangler.com. Uh, you can email us at info at montanaangler.com. Give our offices a call at 406-522-9854. And if you didn't get that... Tell them the Fish Talk Radio told you the call. There you go. And if you didn't get that, go to our website on the front page. You can listen to the show all you want and get, get all the information you missed. You're listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. We'll be right back. stretches for miles in front of you and with the ram 1500 you'll be able to reach mile after open mile it gets a best in class 25 miles per gallon highway so your destination won't just be determined by your gas gauge but by your gauge for achievement and the ram 1500 is the first ever back-to-back motor trend truck of the year guts glory ram see your local ram dealer today for great deals epa estimated 25 mpg highway based on v6 4x2 a full surface fly shop, his and her fly fishing, offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of FishHuntTalkRadio.com or listen live Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. The Soft Science footbed absorbs the shock of pounding waves, engine vibration, and even rocky terrain. Soft Science shoes are roomy and relaxed, and they drain and dry quickly. Check out the Soft Science Fin fishing shoes and boots and the Fin H2O for kayaking and canoeing. They're lightweight, slip-resistant, and won't mark your deck. See the new styles for men and women and get your pair on at softscience.com. Alaskan RV Butler, guiding, fishing, hiking, sightseeing, adventure. The Alaskan RV Butler, like a cruise on wheels in the comfort of an RV, view the wonders of Alaskan interior, streams, ocean, and wildlife, or fish for the big one, all while pampered by Mike, the Alaskan RV Butler. Mike's inclusive tours serve butter-drenched shellfish and mouth-watering steaks. Mike is your personal chef, chauffeur, guide, and planner. And for the real Alaska, contact MikeRVButler at gmail.com. That's MikeRVButler at gmail.com. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan, and we got our host, Frank Selby. And uh, Frank, why don't you introduce J.W.? Okay, this is J.W. Wolf. He is a guide in Washington, and I'm going to let him tell you about his wingman and how to get in touch with him. And I guarantee if you go hunting with him, you're going to have a ball. Or if you could even talk him into going a little bit of fly fishing, you could probably even do that once in a blue moon. J.W., first thing off, how about giving out your website and how to get in touch with you? Sounds good. Thank you. Um, You can reach me at LoneSageOutfitters.com. 
or you can reach me directly at my cell phone at 206-403-7954. And that's Loan, S-A-G-E, Outfitters, Loan Sage. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, when's the best time to come up and fish chucker, hunt chucker, or quail? Well, I'm partial to when it gets cool. Um, I like to get the birds away from the water, give them a fighting chance. So that early November through December is my favorite time of year. It's the easiest on the dogs, and birds are behaving better. And would you tell the, the dog is the most important wingman for you? Well, outside of my wife, and she's probably listening, uh, my dog absolutely is my number one wingman. He's more dependable than my hunting partner. <laughs> what about what about your wife? She, well, she's she's top. She's top. Like right. I can't I can't argue with that lady. Without her, I can't do any of this. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of chucker, I guess a chucker is a partridge, but uh, um, I've tried it, and my recollection is is that they tend to be in rocks at the, you know, like the base of the mountain, and you're mm-hmm. gonna end up climbing over a lot of boulders, and I'm I'm not much into that anymore. So tell us about chuckers. You just got to be a bit more tactical. Um, of course, they, you know, they came from the Himalayan mountains, and so they took hold in the same type of nasty, craggy river canyon. Um, but we do a little bit more, uh, try to get above them early. A lot of places you can't oh. drive to that. And so we hike and take the easy route, maybe a little bit longer, but we get up and start working on them with the thermals. And oh. uh, we get better shot opportunities that way. So instead of chasing them up, you're chasing them down. Right. I, I prefer to get out a little early. I know a lot of people wait until they come down off the mountain and start hunting. But you usually find yourself in an upward climb all day long as compared to where we'd rather get up properly and hunt down on them. Mm-hmm. The older we get, the smarter we get. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh so are you still ever, or are you just still for yourself now fly fishing? You know, I talked a little bit about this earlier, and fly fishing is near and dear to my heart, but I got it a little bit in Montana and Alaska, and I got a bit burnt out with clients. Um, I've learned my lessons from that and applied it to my bird hunting. I still sneak out fly fishing, uh, but I'm really into the steelhead and that's mm-hmm. kind of I save my fly fishing days for unless somebody tries to talk to me into going to Montana well in uh, Alaska there's some ponds and streams that you can uh, I guess you can uh, fly fish but Alaska is not really known um, now Frank and I went up to Alaska and mm-hmm. uh, his goal he says I'm going to get a halibut on the fly and I said Frank if anybody can do it you can but good luck with that of course, no you, know, of course you know the rest of the story yeah. <laughs> I got a 30 pounder. Yeah, it's not too shabby coming from you. Yeah. I had fun. They all paid their 10 bucks, too. I, I, I wouldn't have taken those odds if I were them, but they, they learned. <laughs> yeah, they learned the hard way. <laughs> but I love fly fishing. I love any kind of fishing, and I used to love hunting. My eyes are not that good anymore. And if I can't knock a, a bird down on the first shot, I'm not hunting. Understood. Understood. And uh, But you have some great dogs, and if you don't talk a little bit about it, I'm going to be in trouble. What kind of dogs do you hunt over? So right now, um, and I don't see it changing any time in the near future, but I'm really digging the German wire hair pointer. Um, I've ran setters and labs and pointers and uh, short hairs, and I've done it all, but I've really fallen in love with this specific breed. Um, I've had some local guys that are kind of big names in the game, like Three Devils Kennels, Bull Point, and Boxman Bay, and I've been able to get a couple good dogs from them, and those dogs can do it all. Uh, they hunt sucker like madmen. They retrieve out in the big cold water. And they run big in the prairies where you have the right lines, and they're kind of my bread and butter. 
Uh, uh, without J- those guys, J- I can do it. JW, I don't think we've uh, uh, discussed this before, but let's talk about dogs for a minute. Uh, yeah. First of all, you know, they have natural instincts, but they have to be well trained. Can you give us an idea about um, having or creating a good uh, uh, hunting, hunting, dog. hunting dog? Yeah. The, the, the kind of snapshot of it is, you know, you, you look at your breeding, which is hedging your bet, right? There's no guarantees you're going to have a great dog out of it. If you take that part out, quality stock, you can, you know, hedge it in your direction. Um, after that, I get a puppy, and it's all about socialization. That first couple months, we get our dogs out and about around as many people, noises, places, smells, introduction to birds, uh, gunfire, and get them all ready to go ramped up so that those don't creep in as problems or crutches down the road. And once that first season hits, I cut my dogs loose, and I let them be wild, and then they go out there, and they start searching and finding, and at a little four month or yeah, six month old last year, by the end of the season, he's running 800 yards looking for birds and wow. checking in on his own. For a six month old dog, it's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's really good. Back, yeah, and then when it comes back in the spring, once they've had a lot of bird shot over them, we start putting the, the training on them. And we break them to wing shot and fall and start sorting them up, and then we teach them to kind of use their nose a little bit better and know how to adjust the terrain. You know, if we're hunting tight grouse cover, they need to shorten up. If we're out in the prairies of Montana for sharp tail, I don't want to see you for a while. I want you out finding birds. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the first, most of my dogs have always been labs. Bob Sanchez mm-hmm. trained all my dogs. And the first thing I learned when they're a puppy, when you're looking at them, they're all around shoot off one shot the one that doesn't jump the one that looks and runs over where the shell is is the one you want (laughs) well i tell you what it's a it's a little old school i wouldn't i wouldn't major my pups with that but that's one way to do it It, well blitz was the best dog i ever had and that was the first one i ever used there you go it worked Yes, uh, you know, everything's 50-50. I don't care how good a, br- a breeding they are or how less breeding. It's what yeah. they feel to do. Absolutely. My dog, the only bad thing about my dog, he did not like the... When, when you, he, br- he would bring it back j- and then sit down right in front of you and make a dish rag out of it and then spit oh. it out at your feet. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't yeah, break him of just going up and stopping where it was. Right, right. <laughs> but the rest of the hops were really good with him. Now, one more quick question. Uh, yes, how, how big of a notice does our listeners need to do if they wanted to come up in the fall and hunt chucker or went, uh, different seasons? What's about the best lead time that they could get away with? Okay. I start taking bookings in April of the preceding season. Um, that's when my repeat clients, I give them preference. They've been with me and they've earned a spot to come back and pick dates if you have specific dates. But we're pretty dynamic. And throughout the season, we have people cancel and things change and weather. And, you know, I can get one day notices. If I'm available, we'll get you out. Um, but if I was a best man, I wouldn't wait until the day before. I, I'd do it as far out as possible. Uh, something we didn't mention is pheasant. I think that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about that. You know, we have um, some pretty good, actually, some really good public land spots for pheasants uh, in and around our area of Spokane. We don't get a lot of pressure that we get out on it. It's kind of cool to, you know, pursue wild birds on public mm-hmm. land. Uh, when it gets a little thin pickings, we have some private land we have access to, and uh, we've had some pretty decent pheasant days the last few years. Okay. Well, a couple of quick questions. Uh, do you plant, mm-hmm. on a hunt, do you plant pheasants, or is this all wild? No, no. Unfortunately, uh, I'm only wild birds. Mm-hmm. Uh, no preserve or put and take. Mm-hmm. And uh, normally pheasant, you know, it's like the old cut-down cornfields are the best. Uh, where do you hunt uh, pheasants? Uh, I'm really, I really like the Palouse. Um, I like to cut fields. We like to find those uh, big sweeping ridges of CRP that are in between the crops. 
um, or the hedgerows and you know nesting grounds in that area, and that's where we can find our have our best success. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one favor. This so, year, if you could take a couple backs, the feathers off the back, mail mm -hmm. them to me. <laughs> oh yeah, they make great I make flies. Crawdad yeah. patterns. Oh, I hey guys, we got we only got we only got about thirty seconds left. So uh, yeah. we don't, you want to wrap it up, Frank? Uh, let him uh, tell how to get in touch with him. Okay, again, you can uh, email me at uh, jw at lonesageoutfitters dot com. Or my phone is two zero six four zero three seven nine five four. Okay, JW at loan loaner. No, excuse me, owner. Owner of uh, Lone Stage Outfitters, right? Lone Stage Outfitters, just like the Lone, website. So Lone Stage Outfitters. Oh, you're the owner of Lone Stage S A G E Outfitters dot com. That's an easy one. All right, JW, yes, we appreciate that, and we'll talk to you soon. You are listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. Uh, uh, stay tuned, and we've got plenty more to do. Thank you. A few years ago, a sailor set out to design a boat shoe that was comfortable and stable, non-skid, and wouldn't mark the decks. Today, these incredibly comfortable shoes are worn by anglers, boaters, professional guides, and charter captains. Go to softscience.com to see more. Soft Science shoes and boots are lightweight and shock absorbent with just the right level of support. Several styles come in all sizes. Enjoy the Soft Science shoe in the water and out. Check them out at softscience.com. Used by fishermen who know where to get the best fishing gear around, Aftco makes the highest quality fishing rod components worldwide. If it says Aftco, you know you have a quality rod. Guy Harvey Clothing, the best outdoor clothing line anywhere, is also available through Aftco. Longest lasting, functional, and best looking clothing you'll be proud to wear. Only the very best materials and workmanship. As soon as you put it on, you'll know the difference. Look for Aftco at quality retailers or go to AFTCO.com. Yeah, it's a big one. For passionate sports fishermen who value first-class fishing experiences paired with personalized service and amenities, all-inclusive Salmon Falls Fishing Resort on the Inland Passage reinvents the Ketchikan Fishing Getaway. Guests enjoy exceptional gourmet cuisine, superior fishing excursions, fully guided charter or self-guided in center console boats accommodating three anglers, updated guest rooms, and suites. On-site fishing processing to clean, freeze, and pack your catch. Rooms range from log cabin rustic to modern. Our 52 rooms offer the ultimate in comfort after a long day of sightseeing, fishing, and exploring Ketchikan. Non-anglers love Salmon Falls, too. Shopping along Creek Street, kayaking, hiking, whale watching, or gathering around our fire pits with a hot beverage. All at prices less than expected. Just pull up Salmon Falls Resort in your search engine. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan, uh, and uh, we also have our host, Frank Selby. And gosh, I am so honored. I mean, I worship this guy. Uh, we have the, for the first time, we have the pleasure of Guy Harvey. Now, he is probably the best known um, in the sports fishing community of anybody, anywhere. Um, he is a true artist. And he has a very unique style. Uh, if you see someone, um, you know, down along the docks and they've got a Guy Harvey shirt on, you can see from 50 feet away that it's a Guy Harvey shirt. And it's just, they're just beautiful. I love them. But uh, I just uh, telling Guy, I'm, I have mine are getting a little threadbare, so maybe he can help me out. But uh, he is certainly world renowned. And as far as what he does, and we don't have much time, but just give us a quick uh, overview, uh, Guy, of what it is you do. 
Hey, John. Thank you very much for having me on your show. And um, I'm glad my shirts have been your lucky fishing shirts all these years. There you go. Yes. And talking of all these years, I've been doing the uh, the apparel licensing you know, for over 30 years now, 33 years, in fact. And uh, just concluded a 20-year license with AFCO. We're moving on to a, uh, a new company called Interdeco as of July 1st. Interdeco, and, okay. Yeah, they're based in Miami, and um, they're a, a, a large clothing manufacturer. But um, it's it's been a, a great run so far, and probably the most exciting thing that's happened to me in the in the last year or two is to have my kids come and join the business. Fantastic. My son Alex, yes, he's 26, and he's in the much uh, marketing and merchandising part and my daughter Jessica who's 29 helps me with the uh, foundation work okay is- well guy we have to talk about that that's why I brought you on yeah but before yeah. that let me just mention uh, guy mm-hmm. Harvey shirts generally are not cheap but they're certainly not overpriced and the quality of the material that you use is incredible you know you can wear them roll them up throw them on the floor pick them up the next day and they look just like they came from the, the laundry and well that's, that's that's very accurate and AFCO did an amazing job in terms of the quality and the, uh, the printing quality and everything else and um, you know they're a like minded company with us and we together uh, we will continue to do a lot of conservation work in the field of well let's, let's get into that right yeah. now because we don't have a whole yeah. lot of time the reason I sure. wanted to bring you on today is there's something that's time sensitive that we need to get our listeners to respond to so why don't you get into yeah. that okay. go ahead guy no so uh, a lot of our research work is focused on large pelagic fishes that's the billfishes tunas and sharks more on sharks than any other group of animals because of the urgency required now, John, to really um, get more understanding of their mm-hmm. uh, reproductive capabilities, their migrations, and of course the, the fishing activity that's taken place, the finning, shark finning has right. been a big Oh issue my gosh, that's terrible. For everybody. Yeah. Now so mention mention what you're doing. We're making a lot of progress with mako sharks, tigers, oceanic white tips. Okay, mention what you're doing that you want to do for, in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, uh, you mean following Dorian? Yes. Well, we got together with uh, Johnny Morris and the governor of Florida yesterday at Bass Pro Shop to really, you know, come to an agreement that the fishing community, having derived so many decades of pleasure fishing in the Bahamas, is really going to rally and support the recovery efforts uh, in the Bahamas. Because the the devastation is has been complete. It's been annihilation. No, oh, it hit us in Category Five. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. guy, tell us real quickly. We only got thirty seconds. What can okay. we do to help you do what you do? Well, obviously, money always always goes a long way. Cash, you know, cash is is much needed, um, and whatever you can spare. The the thing is that this is not going to be a, a quick response. It's going to be a long-term recovery process. It's going to take years to build back the Bahamas. So if you can give a little for a long okay. time, that's going to be well, more meaningful. Uh, Guy, let's uh, get the information on how to people how they can do that. We only got 10 seconds. Yeah, I can give you some money. All right. How do we, just 10 seconds. How do we get it to okay, you? Okay, GuyHarvey.com. Okay. They can make just, a donation to the foundation, which will go straight into the Bahamas Recovery Project. Guy Harvey. That's an easy one. G-U-Y-H-A-R-V-E-Y. Uh, Guy, yeah. thank you very much. We such a pleasure. And we're going to get you on when we got more time. Thank you very much. And for keep doing what you're for doing. Sure, John. All righty. Thank, thank buddy. you, buddy. All right. You are listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio, and we had a fantastic show. What a pleasure to have all these people on, and we'll uh, talk to you soon.